Hello, I am Bhagat Oinam, Professor of Philosophy at the Center for Philosophy at uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Uh, today I wish to speak on the theme, Challenges Before Philosophy Research in India and within that issues of perspectives and methods. Uh, rather than fixing myself on a specific method, I thought uh, I will catch up with uh, larger issues, uh, drawing and looking into the canvas of how the researches or higher researchers in philosophy are being done and how it ought to be done further. That is my agenda of this talk. Uh, you know, let me begin with one small anecdote and that will set the tone uh, through which I wish to speak. Uh, once uh, after my uh, PhD research, when I started postdoctoral, uh, the professor who was helping me, uh, who also had a PhD from University of London, told me that uh, do not get bogged down by this European, particularly the British philosophies, analytic philosophy to be more precise. Uh, and he said we were all product of the colonial rule in India. So whatever the British did were of uh, what you call things of envy for us, so including the intellectual discourses. So it was a dream for many of them to go abroad to England and study and that is what he did. But then he told me, do not follow us, do something different. And the alternative he gave was equally interesting. He says, why don't you look for continental philosophy? So in other words, the influence of the analytic philosophy was a phase in the history of uh, academic research in India. So now it's time, according to this professor, to look at the continental philosophy and pursue further. Now whether you are influenced by the analytic traditions or continental traditions, the point remains the same. You are being deeply influenced by the Eurocentric worldview and you are deeply influenced as a part of that worldview with the methods and ways of philosophizing and also the perspectives or the prisms through which you look at philosophical issues and problems. So this is an old issue which the intellectuals of this country had been facing and still it continues to be faced, including my, my own uh, contemporaries. Now the challenge before us is how original can we be and how much can we do uh, a meaningful research engaging with the issues and challenges that the country is faced with. In other words, the problem that are there in certain parts of the world, those problems need not necessarily be the problem of us, but somehow we tend to take the problems of others as our own problems. And this is what not only other disciplines, but even to the discipline of philosophy. Now, someone may challenge me saying, that philosophy as a discipline is very distinct and different from other disciplines to the extent that while other disciplines, perhaps mathematics in excluded, while other disciplines are largely focused on the empirical world as a subject matter, philosophy's subject matter is of concepts and ideas. And we do not, in philosophy, deal directly with 
the empirical world. So, ideas which is essentially abstract in nature, even though are rooted, have its own place at the conceptual domain. So, we should not be bothered by the context, the historicity, the situations of any time. That could be one argument which can come as a criticism against the position that I am holding. Nevertheless, I would like to still hold on that no ideas of philosophy is away from the empirical world. Philosophical ideas certainly are at the level of the concepts, but these concepts are somehow linked to the world that we live. Whether those concepts may be of descriptive in nature, that it, it describes certain objects of the world, or it could be a concept of imagination, concept of possibility. But even what we imagine, even what we think as a possibility, cannot be completely denounced from the world that we live in. So, to that extent, our study and research cannot be atemporal. It is located in space and time. And so, our commitment to issues and challenges are also historically rooted. That is my simple submission to begin with. This issues has been talked by Kesi Bhattacharya in his Swaraj in Ideas, way back in 1928, when he talked about the same issue that the very interesting statement he made is that when I give this lecture, this lecture that Swaraj in Ideas, which he gave at Hooghly College, said that perhaps I cannot give this lecture in my own native language called Bangla. So, when you are preparing and delivering a talk in a language called English, it is not merely a medium of communication, but the language also carries certain worldviews, certain idioms, certain values, certain meanings, very much rooted in that tradition. And perhaps shifting quickly from English to Bangla, which Kesi Bhattacharya felt would be almost impossible because language is, has its own discourse and worldview. Kesi, we, we uh, commonly abbreviate his name. Uh, Kesi, we also was of the view that any ideas that comes from outside should be welcome as long as it helps in creative movement of thought. So, so far as it helps in creativity and uh, helping in bringing out more meaningful discourse, those ideas from outside must be welcome. But he also cautioned that influence from outside, either in terms of language or in terms of ideas, must not be blindly followed that you completely forget your own traditions, which see called indigenous traditions. So, non-modern, by indigenous, what KCB was perhaps suggesting is my reading is, the non-modern worldview must not be sacrificed at the cost of, I mean, at our over-excitement with the modernist concepts. If the modernist concepts from outside are helpful to us, we should certainly go by that and try to blend them creatively with the local traditions and language and culture. But completely debunking the local or the indigenous and what you call accepting in total 
anything that comes from outside is something worth investigating and looking through. And it is in this context, when we talk of philosophy research in India, I would like to bring this very idea of Swaraj in ideas, in the very way we conceptualize, think independently. By word independently, I am not suggesting that only that which is rooted in my tradition, but independently in the sense that I think for myself or we think for ourselves, for our own betterments, even if that includes taking ideas from outside, that should be welcome, but provided that the issues and challenges are ours, not the issues should be copied, borrowed from the outside world, because that will not be our problem. Our problem should be ours as we face here and now. And for that, we, if we take help in terms of ideas, concepts, or methods from outside, that should be welcome. Now, with that, let me uh, make further presentation in terms of two sets of uh, deliberation that I wish to make further. First is on setting of perspectives, the kind of perspectives we set in order to do research in this country. And the second one is on the specific ways of philosophizing, or what I call the methods of philosophizing, the specific steps that we take in order to do philosophizing. So these are the two uh, domain which I would like to deal with today after this brief introduction. By perspective, what I mean is what I also say another, uh, what you call analogy is, it's like wearing a spectacle. The what kind of spectacle we wear in order to see the objects that we see. So, it is very important that certain perspective or views are perhaps required in order to access to the objects that we see. We also, however, know that in the history of ideas, we have also books or writings called A View from Nowhere. So, the whole idea was to get away from perspectives. But my strong hunch is, irrespective of how much we try, we always will find ourselves standing on the ground. Without standing on a ground, you cannot see. Because in order to be stable, I have to be standing or sitting at some point, some space. And that is what I call the perspective. Without this perspective in view, you cannot have a meaningful resource. So, very commonly what we do, and my uh, understanding also comes from some of the evaluation uh, I myself had been doing of PhDs in this country. Also, the PhD and MPhil that we, I had been guiding. And thirdly, uh, I had the good fortune to be part of uh, what you call evaluation committee of Indian Council of Philosophical Research, where you give junior research fellowship to uh, people, students doing research at different universities. And from the range of my uh, experience, I can very firmly say that uh, there are few very popular ways of doing research in India. One is that it is a school-based uh, research. So, uh, perhaps unlike the West, uh, we are very much tuned 
to uh, researches based on classical schools of thought. So, you have uh, research on Sankhya tradition, you have uh, research on Advaita tradition or on Nyaya, Buddhism and so on and so forth. So, the school based, the perspective from a school of thought in Indian traditions. So, this has been very, very popularly being done. But I will also add one thing, one particular point to make. Even though there are several schools of thought in classical Indian traditions, these are fairly limited. The students that who comes out from university system are tuned to what you call 6 plus 3. This is a very popular uh, number that we often tell our students that you have, you know, uh, astika and nastika and then 6 plus 3. Uh, that school seems to be what the students one after another keeps coming doing research. And perhaps on the same theme, if you look at funding done by ICPR in the last few uh, years, you might find maybe a decade or so, you will find that Advaita philosophy must be the most popular. And if you look further, you will see that Maya and uh, you know the Satchitanan, these are the concepts which are most popularly dealt with. And perhaps there are you know repetition of the same research going on. So perhaps with very little new ideas emerging out, new questions coming up. Uh, my, this is not exactly a complaint, but to submit that there is also need to go beyond this 6 plus 3 numerology that we do in, in understanding classical Indian philosophy, the nu numerical uh, perspective that we sit, set up that six, six, what you call astika and the three nastika. What about Saiva Darshan? This is hardly being witnessed in the university systems in this country. Syllabus, very few perhaps university teach on Saivism. And there are not one kind of Saivism, but there are several kinds of Saivism in this country. And those uh, traditions are almost absent in the philosophy curriculum of this country. That is my worry, that uh, the multiplicity that this country is, not only in terms of language, race, culture, but even in the ideas, intellectual traditions, the richness of this country, in terms of promoting and allowing to have flourish multiple intellectual viewpoints which this country has nourished unlike many traditions of the world and that is our strength but this strength have not been sufficiently tapped this is my first submission so one perspective that we had been continuing is on the school based study the other one which is equally important is textual study. Text-based study is something we uh, closely follow. And perhaps it is in these traditions that we try to be as close to the text. And to that extent, some of our researchers uh, take this position that uh, the research has to be done by reading the text, the words that is being spelled out in the text and not going beyond. And to that extent, these researchers try to somehow hold on to the view of atemporality, that the ideas are atemporal and it has nothing to do with historicity and the context. And that is how the philosophical discourses are being uh, taken up. 
I am not against this view. This is certainly one way of philosophizing, getting outside of the context, getting outside of the temporal sequences uh, and uh, to be as true as possible to the text that we are reading. This is one way. But we also know that there are possibility of multiple reading of the same text. And we know from the traditions that how Ramayana has been read and reread, how Mahabharata has been reread, and how Badrayana Sutra itself has been commented by several subsequent philosophers. So, to say that there is one original meaning of a text is also highly problematic. And we know this from the Harminoitic traditions, which comes from the West. But uh, it is worth looking at these Harminoitic traditions when we do textual reading. And if we take that into account, not necessarily becoming ultra nationalist, saying that whatever we read, we read from my own ground. I will prefer to go with KCB that yes, I have to stand on my ground, but in the process of standing and articulating, if good ideas come from outside, that should be welcome as far as it helps in the better understanding of the ideas that I am handling with. So textual reading, even though we might uh, hope for an original meaning which is true to the text, let us also remember that I am standing on a ground and this ground is temporally located, historically located. So this is a point of caution which I am going to come in the second phase. We also have, apart from this, a philosopher-oriented study. And if you look at last two to three decades of research on Indian philosophy, perhaps the most popular name would be Adi Sankara. And these students are deeply influenced, but I am not very sure whether this influence comes from the students themselves or they are being fed to the students by their own teachers. Uh, so I leave that open-ended. But the point remains that the third perspective which I uh, mention is a philosopher-oriented study that is also uh, being closely done in the philosophical tradition, in this philosophical research in India. The another perspective which is uh, fairly interesting is that of picking up with the history of ideas. Though lots of work are being done in terms of tracing how the ideas have evolved over time, this has not been sufficiently done. I would even like to uh, refer to recent work by uh, Raghuram Raju on uh, Badrayana Sutra and subsequently what has been uh, being discussed on the issues and problems raised by uh, Gaudapada, whether the Gaudapada was a Buddhist or was an Advaitin. And he was trying to do this in through uh, tracing the history of ideas. And uh, much research needs to be done in this line, the tracing the history of how the ideas flow to and fro, and ideas evolve. But by history of ideas, uh, it will be a very easy exercise if we merely go by what you call the linear model of time, with the, which the history writing is being done in the Western discourse, that you have the AD and BC, and subsequently you try to track how the ideas are flowing over a period of time through philosophers, through text. But when I say history of ideas, 
I have something in mind more than what we understand by history in the Western sense. Uh, I would like to draw your attention to the works by uh, Professor D.P. Chattopadhyay, who was the general editor of History of Science, Philosophy and Culture in Indian Traditions, and also the work of Professor G.C. Pandey. Uh, though the word history has been equated as a vocabulary uh, with itihas, and that is what we teach our students in schools, that textbook on itihas. But itihas is, as these philosophers and historians have articulated, are not the same as we understand history and in the Western traditional discourse. Though we have equated them, there is a particular idea of itihas, which is closely linked with itihas and Purana. And that is to say that the, the notion of time is not linear, but in Indian tradition, the notion of time is cyclical. And the change in the model of time itself helps in a different mode of philosophizing on the very ideas, in the very way in which we catch up with ideas. How a philosophical idea not only traverses to and fro, but these ideas come from literature, from myth, and even from certain creative writing, not necessarily of a reading of the concrete empirical world. So the philosophical ideas, when we trace the history of ideas, must be looked uh, from a very multiple way of looking at history, not only through the linear model of time, but different models of time, as I said, cyclical in Indian traditions. So that is one uh, brief submission I would like to make when we talk of uh, looking at philosophizing from perspective, uh, from the from setting of perspectives.